The world can sometimes feel like a stomach-churning, never-ending roller coaster ride one just wants to get off. So this has to be one of the absolutely most unhinged rants I've ever seen. In these last years, if these last years have taught us anything, it's that the social fabric is extremely fragile and it doesn't take much to tear it apart. We have also learned that once people start tearing at it, they get an appetite for it and it becomes harder and harder to get them to stop. Tear it all down, man. Teach the kids about their bodies and sex and freedom. Give them the pills which turn them into girls. It's 2023, man. Put your dress on. Let's go for a drink. It's going to be a wild, wild ride. It seems that society is going in one of two directions. Either this endless, dizzying roller coaster ride continues on, speeding up and up and up, or it is brought to a sudden, painful and abrupt stop. One way is to stay on this mass psychosis ride of viciously compelled conformity and reality denial, dressed up as hyperliberalism, where politicians, pop stars, social media and movie stars all behave like they poured a jug of LSD on their cornflakes every morning instead of milk, and we, the sane, just have to nod along confused, being kind and accepting, for fear of damaging their feelings, their self-esteem, or indeed our own careers, this is my identity, my truth, my lived experience, me, mine. Clean the ocean, save the planet, wear a mask, get vaccinated, be free, man. The world is coming to an end. So that was Lawrence Fox from Great Britain News going on what has to be one of the most absurd things I've ever heard. And it's honestly amazing, like, how much trans people, trans women in particular, have the ability to just trigger, like, this complete nonsense in Republicans. Like, quite literally, he's talking like the world is falling apart. And what this really boils down to is he's just complaining about the fact that people are more accepting of each other. Like, really, at the end of the day, just the idea of, like, hey, trans women should be allowed to live in society, and we should probably consider it to be, at a minimum, polite to, like, respect people's pronouns. And that is enough to send right-wingers, like, flying into this weird rant about the end of civilization. Like, come on, get a life. It's just unbelievably pathetic how these right-wingers, like, act like the existence of trans people is some, like, fundamental threat to society. And he talks about how, like, this roller coaster is this, oh my goodness, this chaos, oh, can you even believe? Well, also somehow trying to tie this into climate change, talking about like, oh, look at them, they're all complaining about the climate. And then also at the same time pretending that like queer folks and climate activists are somehow like magically incredibly wealthy. Like this is the complete nonsense, right? They will look at marginalized groups. They will pretend that people of marginalized groups are like super wealthy and powerful while simultaneously tearing apart society. And that doesn't make any sense. Why would these incredibly wealthy, powerful people also be tearing apart society? And if they were so wealthy and powerful, how come trans people get discriminated against so much and how come climate activists very often struggle to really make any of the progress or change that we desperately need in order to stop climate change? Like, how come oil companies keep making so much money? And it's just this complete nonsense. But there is something that is really terrifying in here, where he's talking about, like, we need to pull the brake. But what does that actually mean? Like, what does it mean when you have people pull the brakes on progress? Well, like, fundamentally what it means, if you actually look at what these right-wingers push for, it means stripping away rights from women, it means stripping away rights from other marginalized groups, it means, like, fundamentally, like, very extreme policies of stripping away people's health care, of pushing privatization of industries. And, you know, there was a government at one point in time that really did want to put the brakes on progress, uh, that went about these policies of, like, privatization in order to maintain uh, their perfect ideal version of society. And uh, I think we all recognize that society to have been one of history's most evil societies. I think that that country maybe perhaps lost a war and I'm pretty sure it was a big one but no like fundamentally that's where these Republicans go to like they're so willing to create these like ridiculous rants and conspiracy theories in order to justify their bigotry right they say that we're being intolerant by telling them that they're rude if you call a conservative racist they will behave as though you have just like insulted like their entire family or something they take it as such an extreme personal attack and they consider that to be uncivil they say if if you call me racist, that's exactly the same as me being racist and doing all these terrible things. And it's just this ridiculous twist of logic that they do. And they're like, oh, you're so intolerant. You're so hateful because you called me racist or transphobic or 
homophobic or sexist. And then they just go into crisis mode and they paint this image of themselves as being like these helpless victims while also simultaneously being like these alpha male upholders of like Western traditions. It doesn't make any sense, but it doesn't have to make sense because fundamentally what these people are about or using systemic state violence in order to strip whites away from marginalized people. And it's just that simple. So they will use whatever narrative is useful for them to strip away the rights of whatever marginalized group they're trying to strip rights away from at the moment. They don't really have a commitment to reality and they definitely don't have any consistent type of self image, much less image of society at large. They're just opposed to the idea of cisgender white men not being at the top of the white supremacist system that both the United States and the UK are fundamentally founded on. And yet still, despite all of the obvious harm that these people create in society, it is just funny to see like how deeply unhinged these types of rants actually are. Because especially whenever you bring up trans people, all of a sudden these people just lose every connection to reality. There's just something about trans people that absolutely melts conservative brain, leading to moments like this of pure, incoherent gibberish from conservative commentators, upset that society continues to progress forward and continues to realize that acceptance is the way of life, while they're trying to grip onto the image of a world that honestly never really existed in the first place, and aim to recreate some sort of fantasy that they have about what the past really was. When in actuality, as we all really know, if you go back to the United States or the UK 50 years ago, things were not all that great.